G'day, my name is Tom, this is the Tech Players YouTube channel. Welcome back to OMSI 2. This is episode 4.1. Uh, meaning point one, meaning this is the review stage, and then we're going to be doing the drive stage of season one. Um, last episode we checked out the Marco Polo G6 1800 B12R, and um, it's actually over there somewhere. But for now we are going to get started with the MA Alliance coach. We're going to give out each bus a cold start. I've had the guide plugs running for a bit, so it should be ready to start. So, clutch in. Yes. There we go. Starting right up. As you can see, it has its um, daytime running lights until you turn off the engine. Just like so. Next up, we have the Volvo 9900, which is the. Oh, you see it there. Just a minute. I guess, it, guess that's not a help. So there we have the. Um, so that's the next one we're going to look at. We'll talk about that in a second. Do a cold start of this bus. There you go, that's the uh, Volvo 9900 and all the um, systems are flowing. There we go, this one doesn't have daytime running lights or anything like that. And then last but not least, we had last episode, the G Marco Polo DD G6 B12R, which is uh, a very nice bus it was, and started her up. Now the one that's in the description box is version 1.5, I think this is an older version. Uh, because I can't find the automatic bus, because there is an automatic bus available. Alright, I think they're running. There we go. So there's some hesitation. There we go. Right, so that is the four buses that we looked at in the, um, well, three buses that we looked at in the, par uh, in the um, past three episodes. This episode, we're going to be looking at that bus. That is the K10 Levante uh, Volvo B9R, and it's also a B11R with that pack. Uh, so this is the one that we are going to be looking at today. It is our first right-hand drive bus for this series. So as you can see, it is a two-wheel bus. It's very small um, for, for the design that we're talking about. It's, very, it's a very small bus. Uh, not much outside components are interactive. I think that something's interactive there. I don't know why we're clicking on. Um, yeah, hang on. Um, so this is the Green Line 757 between London and, and Luton Airport bus. And uh, we have the lights there. We'll check out the lights in a second before we start the bus. So we got Luton Airport, London to Lu Luton Airport to London Airport to London, which is the, um, yeah, this is obviously an airport bus. We will have an airport map for this bus. And, um, yeah, so the outside looks very simplistic. It is a typical coach bus with the puppy ears, I guess I could call it. Um, I'm pretty sure it's, I don't know sure what they call it in person, but it has the puppy ear mirrors there. And, um, yeah, let's check out the interior, shall we? So the interior is a very nice leather interior. I would would mind sitting in this um, personally. Uh, you have you can sit in the seats. There's a view to the dashboard over there, and then we can go to the bathroom. Are we sitting on the toilet? No, we're not. There's the bathroom. Then we're at the back again. There's some. Um, Coca-Cola in there. So uh, that's I see I see what that's doing. I right, should go to unload so you can unload the furniture there, that's pretty cool. Now we're back to the inside, like so. Anyway, let's jump into the dashboard here. As I said it's right hand drive and it's also in miles per hour, the dashboard. This bus has done five hundred thousand kilometers, so nearly six hundred thousand kilometers. So you got your speed there, as you can see your radio, so your air con controls, then over here a whole bunch of buttons that I uh, have no idea what each one of them do. That's turning off your reverse horns, I know that, but the rest I have no idea what they do. Um, your windows, uh, your lights, switches, open your door, close your door. Let's see if that does anything. No, you can't open that. 
going to open that the doors there. There you got your battery. Uh, something else, traction control, I'm guessing, or slip control, your raising and lowering. And uh, yeah, then on your dash here, you have your turbo gauge, your fuel, your oil pressure gauge, your your temperature, coolant temperature, your tachometer, speedometer, fuel, and your brake right, pressure. Then over here is a mobile phone. I believe this is used for IBIS systems. I don't know. And then you have your lights, and then you have your parking brake, and you have a coke can, which you can open with a Iconic sound. Then you've got a card thing there to put into your system, and then you've got your breathalyzer, which we're going to use when we start the bus. Then we've got a CD there to put into the into the um, radio, which we're not going to put in because it could be copyrighted material. Anyway, um, very in depth of um, interior, lots of things to go and check. So we are going to go and give her a start. So to start it, well, uh, for the first start, you have to turn on the ignition by pressing the electric button. Don't go turn off the Decayed and then everything comes to life with a little, I like that little display there. And as you can see, it's very similar to the um, Volvo 9900 that we looked at earlier. This is just the right hand drive version, so this will be for right hand drive maps. <coughs> so you have your temperature, your outside temperature, your in air temperature, your time, how much liters of fuel you've got, what gear you're in. They are in neutral. Does this have a manual gearbox? It doesn't, so. Oh, I don't think it does. Where's the gearbox? Oh, see, this is the gearbox. It's a guy. Yeah, see, it doesn't. I can't put it. Or can I, if I drag it more? No. Oh, wait, hang on. I guess we'll, I'll try it later. So now we've got this, so we're going to press the button there. Give it a wait. So it's a little different system, and we're going ready. Then we're going to blow into it. Pass, and then we can start the bus by just pressing the ignition button. There we go, and it kind of revs itself up. And, um, yes, yeah, so now we're going to this running, so what you do is take the parking brake off. There's that little noise, and then we go into... Okay, what's this thing? That light there. Right, so there we go, and now we're just going to put it into drive. Goes into gear like so, and away we go. So let's see how... And as you can see, your um, dash works too. So this is also a 12 speed. And then let's take it for a double break, and then we're going to take it for a, for a so we're doing about, about, well actually we're doing about 80% for a double break, 87% for a double break. So in this one we're pressured, this bus actually drives very nice, um, it goes through the gears quite nicely, and it's very smooth, it's very nice, it's very smooth, it's very nice, 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 So this is for episode 4.2 and 4.3 for season 1, season 1, as in case you're new here, uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button, and if you are enjoying the Obsidian 2 content on the channel recently, if you are not out of view, don't forget to hit the like button down below. Uh, so, um, yeah, um, if you are new here, um, this is my 2013 game Let's Play. As you know, I'll, um, um, I'm actually going through the previous decade of driving, simulation or driving games in general. And 2010 we had Need Speed Hot Pursuit, 2011 we had um, Dirt Free. In 2012 we had Euro Truck Simulator 2, which is still going to be going in the future, or it's just waiting for that update for robots. And 2013 is, of course, Obsy 2, uh, which is what we're playing today. And in 2014, who knows? If we get close to the end, I will let you know what 2014 game is. Um, it's a pretty popular game to today's day and age, too. How uh, what 2014 game is, 2014's game is going to be. And obviously, Obsy 2 came out in 2013, I think, December 2013. Technically, this is a 2014 game. I think this came out like, like, like December 2014, November 2014. Maybe. And, um, yeah. and then, as you can see, it says it's all speed gearbox. So, as you can see in the dash there, it tells you what gear you are in. And it says 12. I'll kick down, Tess. You might kick down. There we go, that's a drawback. Already. 
I guess it could. Yeah, because I've got this one sort of set them to just like that Volvo over there. Yeah, I've got my bus over there. And, um, yeah. So now we're going to do a quick U turn to test to test the um, wheel base and test the turning circle. Because um, some buses are different, as you know. And, uh, let's go. And we're right in the middle of a run, so that's actually a really good turning circle. So now we are going to do a lap, like a proper lap. We have warmed up the bus, I believe. Maybe that doesn't say we have did a warm up lap. So let's go and do a race. What if I could launch control? Because I think if I remember, I think I forgot to say that the other bus has launch control. I'm pretty sure. So if I have my foot like. So now we're in third gear. Now we're in seventh for some reason. Like that other bus will do the same thing. Anyway, we go. This goes to show how bad the gearbox is. Right? It's like driving an automated manual, it's a single clutch. Alright, away we go. Let's go take this on a full on track race. You can definitely feel the obviously heaviness and everything like that. I say that every time I'm driving a different bus. Um, I was meant to do a video on a bus that I have reviewed in the past, like it went way too far. Let's just show this over to you. Um, but I thought I could do that for episode 10, like I could bring back another bus that I have reviewed in the past. That's a coach bus that I really, really love. Um, that's a hint to what it, what's to come in the um, series two in the season. So yeah, so this bus drives overall very very nice. Um, um you can get it on Fellows Field, I think it is. Um, I'll link it in the description below. Um, I hope um, for the driving dynamic, I believe it's a great driving bus. They will do a light test when we get done, when we get back, and then we'll do the pros and cons, and then, um, yeah. This bus sounds good too. Let's go give it a little. And it looks like it's will be up to look at the wind air temperature there. On the dashboard. Yeah, so this bus is a fantastic bus to drive. Obviously there's a couple of let downs. But it's but this is such a good bus, I'm absolutely happy with it. 205 litres used. <coughs> I does kick down, but not that far. I don't kick down in one gear, man. Not like some other buses. Some other buses kick down better than this bus. Anyway, now we cross the line, we're going to go park the bus. And then we're going to do a quick hour of light, just park it next to the um, Marco Polo here. Which has the same livery as the other ones don't. Um, I want um, the um, MAM bus, if you have a different livery apart from the efficient line, the actual set file won't have the um, same steering wheel. Right, let me just make sure we are lining up. Oh, oh it, won't, it won't go on its own because it's a. It's just Right, before we turn off everything, let's do a quick light test. We go brakes are the middle lights, lights are the back lights, now uh, reverse. Okay, that's the reverse light, there's a reverse buzzer. Uh, let's see the horn. Same horn, more horn as the Volvo. This one is a 2010 model. Um, you know that by the, um, by the um, number plate, if you are a United Kingdom citizen, you should know that. That's the first year of registration. So it's either 2010 or 2011. Um, what do the hazards look like? <coughs> there's your hazards in the front, there's your side markers, then the back, it's in the middle. Um, I don't even know what that light, what's that light? Is that the reverse light? Yeah, that's the reverse light. Um, yeah! So that is the Volvo, um, 
that the Kato Levante, this is the B9R model, we will be using this model in the actual um, driving portions. So we don't need to look at the B11R, it's a little bit bigger. And um, yeah, whilst we had to look at the uh, Lions Coach L, because the Lions Coach L was a tiny bit different to the Lions Coach. So the pros of this bus, it drives nice, um, lots of features, and it's very similar to a 9900, which is already a good bus. Uh, so that's the pros. The cons, number one, um, I believe the, um, when the engine's off, I think the dash, got, uh, the actual um, tech on would a little bit too low, it should be like straight, like the, that thing there, unless they copy that from the, um, copy that like, style from um, a Euro Truck Simulator. Uh, two, the uh, gearbox doesn't kick down, uh, uh, the gearbox scripting doesn't kick a lot to kick down. Like, for instance, the, say the MAN does, like when you, uh, like, MAN um, does an SD202 or whatnot, um, you uh, put your foot down and it actually kicks down. And number three, I'd say the, <coughs> uh, I don't know, what would be another foot one? I guess some buttons um, don't work or they do. You can click on them, but they don't do anything. So overall, this bus is probably a seven and a half out of ten. Uh, like there's, as actually no, fourth con, it's a little bit too busy in here. But I think this is the real how the real bus looks. It's a little bit too busy. But yeah, I mean, and also too, I feel like the bus revs up too high when you start it. Uh, that's just my thinking. Like these buttons don't work. <laughs> Like, get into things that don't work. Pretty much. So, let's see if I can click those on. Do they, do they work? Oh, I see what they do. Okay, so that's how you open up the sides if you click on those buttons. That's actually quite clever. So, never mind that complaint, that actually works. That opened up the top bits. That's actually quite clever. So, um, yeah, never mind that. I mean, there are still some bugs. But if you can, you can do that for your reverse horn. So, let's see what other bugs you can do. The windows don't work too, so I guess that's what for complaint. That's your hand over displays thing. So you can actually put like a destination number in. And then as you can see it actually um, puts it into the feed and that works too. That's a bus and price show because not many modern buses actually have a working screen. So that's that. Let's give it a rip. Sounds pretty good. Let's turn off the engine. Put the handbrake on, and then I'll say it out. I'll turn it off when I uh, end the video. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. I know it's uh, a very detailed, very short by detailed video on the uh, Kanto Live Out. So there's a link in the description down below. Do I recommend it? I reckon I would because oh, because there's some good um, UK bus, UK maps out there. Um, I might have a dedicated series to other UK buses. This will probably re-include this. Um, I am going to re-include mods I have reviewed in the past because there isn't a lot of. So there's not a lot of coach bosses. Uh, this is a coach boss series. Uh, let me know down in the comments below if you know any other coach bosses you want me to review. So so far we've done the MAN Lions coach for Volvo 9900, the Marco Polo G6 Volvo B12R, as well as the Kato Levante Volvo B9R and the 11R technically, but I'm not going to do the 11R because it's very similar to this bus. Uh, so I hope you have enjoyed. Make sure you hit the like button if you have. If you're stopping by for the first time, please subscribe. Take care, have a good one. Bye-bye.